Hello, Gearspace. I'm glad to have you here at our booth at the Super Booth 2023. And of course, I wanted to show you uh, our news, uh, which we have here. We have two new polyphonic modules. One is uh, a voltage controlled portamento generator, generator or, or slew limiter, which has four inputs and four outputs uh, to obtain a polyphonic portamento. I just will you show it. I play uh, an, an chord. Without portamento, it's like that. And if I increase the, the portamento time, it's like that. It means uh, the pitch uh, goes slowly from one to another and you can adjust the time from, from very long to faster or very fast. So that's, that's without uh, portamento. So that's one uh, of the new polyphonic modules. The other one is a polyphonic mixer. What we have here are two uh, quad VCOs. The first quad VCOs goes to channel A of the mixer. And uh, I will let me see. That's the loudness of, uh, of the first channel. And uh, the second channel has a special feature. If it is not uh, connected to a VCO, it uh, makes available the, the sub octaves. So let me see, I will show it. This is without, and this is with a sub octave. Okay, and uh, on the input three, of the polyphonic mixer, I have uh, another VCO, another quad VCO, and uh, in this VCO, I use the rectangles, so it sounds like that. And I can add uh, pulse width modulation to the rectangles of the VCO by using these four LFOs, and this sounds like that. So you obtain much more fatness and you can add the, f the first VCO and you can add also the sub octaves. Oh, very, very fat uh, sound. And an an another module I want to show you is uh, our new phaser module. It's um, a clone of uh, the so-called compact phasing A, which was um, manufactured in the 70s of the last century and was used virtually by all uh, famous musicians like uh, Klaus Schulze or Kraftwerk or Tenger and Dream and, and so on. And we made a, a copy of, of this phaser because it's available only second hand at very high prices and uh, I remember that I loved this phaser at the time very much. So once again, the same sound without phaser. And now I add, I add the phasing with, with a low, low LFO. Or I can increase uh, the speed of the LFO. Yeah, okay. These are these three modules and uh, my friend Holger will show you uh, another module. It's uh, a dual voltage count LFO, and I will give the microphone over to Holger. Okay, so uh, what we're looking at is uh, the 147.4 dual voltage controlled LFO. 
Um, this is, as the name says, a voltage-controlled LFO. Um, it's two completely independent channels, very straightforward design, very simple. What you see is what you get on the front panel. It can be voltage-controlled, it can be reset. It's got five waveforms, pulse, triangle, sine, plus ramp up, ramp down. The pulse wave can be set manually between 0 and 100%, plus it can be voltage controlled. Um, the special thing about it, kind of, is that uh, it can be controlled with 1 volt per octave. And depending on the jumper setting, uh, it goes more or less deep into audio range. One setting is a maximum frequency which, which is limited around 2 kilohertz. The other one is limited around 200 hertz. And um, uh, the, the uh, 2 kilohertz one, uh, there the slowest setting is about... We can try and watch the LED while I'm talking. And on the slower one, it's 10 times longer, the cycle. And uh, yeah, um, due to the uh, reset input in audio, in audio range, it could also do a hard sync. So uh, we find this a rather useful thing for a small system. You can decide if you need an auxiliary oscillator or uh, an LFO. Um, another thing is that the uh, modulation input can be switched off by this switch or it can be uh, used positive or inverted. And um, uh, the control voltage input itself is bipolar, but if you use it as, for example, an audio um, oscillator, a lot of voltage sources like sequencers, sequencers can't do negative voltages. Therefore, we you can invert and then subtract. Um, it might also be a good performance feature just to switch it off and on as you, as you need. And if the control voltage input is not used, we have, uh, as an extended range control, um, uh, stable voltage normalized to the CV input. So, to see this, just to show this here, um, to extend the range of the manual controls, because one knob would be a bit limited. So, uh, I think think that that should give you a picture of what it can do. Um, yeah, and uh, right, the, it's, it's relatively stable, so once it's warmed up, it's a Curtis oscillator in the end. Um, it will give you a stable clock in case you don't want to use MIDI clock or other clock sources. So you can easily, by adding or subtracting one volt, uh, double the speed or uh, uh, divide the speed by two and all that, or any other given value although probably the most practical ones are doubling and dividing by two. Thank you.